Hi everyone, Anthony Morganti here. Recently, Topaz Labs have released an update to Gigapixel AI. It is now version 6.1. In this latest version of Gigapixel AI is a new feature called Face Recovery AI. If you have an image that is heavily cropped and compressed, Face Recovery AI will help return detail and skin texture to the faces of any people that happen to be in that image. In today's video, we're going to test it out. Now we're going to be using Gigapixel AI as a Lightroom plugin. It of course works as a standalone application and as a plugin in Photoshop as well. We're going to be working on this image. This is a stock photo and it isn't heavily cropped and it isn't compressed, but we're going to do that now. We're going to crop it at least. We're gonna to go to the crop tool and I'm going to do a super tight crop on the model in the background on her face. So we're just going to do this super tight crop on her face. I'll click done to commit to that. So we have this very tight crop on the model that was in the extreme background of the image. And as you look at it, you could see that it's pretty bad, right? We could see the individual pixels even. So this is a good candidate for Gigapixel AI and Face Recovery AI. So let's send it into Gigapixel AI. I'm gonna right click right on the image. I'm gonna go down to Edit In and down and over to Topaz Gigapixel AI. Now it is a JPEG because it was a stock photo. Um, I am going to edit a copy with Lightroom Adjustments because I did crop it. So I want that crop to be reflected into the image that I send over there. And we're going to keep the default options down here, TIFF, Pro Photo, RGB, and so on. Click Edit. The top left-hand corner, uh, Lightroom, you see a progress bar. Lightroom is creating that TIFF file with those specifications. And it will open it up into Gigapixel AI. And once it does, you'll notice that I have my Gigapixel AI uh, by default set up into what's called Comparison View. There's five different AI models. And with comparison view, I could view four of them at one time and compare them to one another. Now, I'm going to zoom in. I'm going to go up to the zoom tool up here in the top right-hand corner. I'm going to take the slider and I'm going to zoom in so we could get a better look, a closer look at the model's face. So, I'll let it render. The top left-hand corner is using the standard AI model, AI model. And if I click on it, you will get a before after. There's before and there's after. The one to the right of that is the very compressed AI model. There's before and there's after. The one in the lower left is the low resolution model. There's before and there's after. And the one to the uh, lower right is the art and CG model. And there's before and after. Now we're missing the lines model because I only could view four at one time. If I want to see lines, just pick one. I'll pick Art and CG and swap it out with lines by clicking on lines. Now lines will go there, and that is worse than Art and CG. Art and CG look to be a little better. So you can see that uh, when I click on them and do before afters, they're improved considerably. But I haven't even returned turned on Face Recovery AI. This is without Face Recovery AI. In additional settings, at the bottom, you'll see face recovery, and you need to turn it on for each individual model. Right now, I have the standard model active. I'll turn it on. And by the way, I happen to have all the four models that are showing uh, set to automatic settings. I like to keep everything on automatic to begin with so I could compare apples to apples, oranges to oranges as best as possible. So I could compare them all on auto and determine which one is better. Now. I have face recovery AI turned on, and when I turn it on, you'll notice below it a, a slider appears. This is the face recovery strength. This is how much of the effect do you want to be applied to the image. Um, I have it at zero at the moment. Let's turn it up to 100 and let it render. What, what I found is it tends to blur the features more the higher you have this, but it tends to smooth the skin more. So. Um, I found with most images, somewhere around 50 seems to work pretty well. So here is the standard model with face recovery AI turned on. And there is before and there is after. 
Now, one thing I want to make note, you'll notice it says face recovery, not face recovery AI. In all of Topaz Labs marketing materials, they are calling this face recovery AI. They don't happen to have it written that way, though, in the application. All right, let's go over to Very Compressed. I'll click on that to make that active. I'll turn face recovery on for that. I have that set at 50. So there's that one. That's before and that's after. Now, I imagine you really can't see this in the video, but I have my nose 12 inches away from my screen. And I could tell by looking at them that the standard model of the two, the standard model is better than very compressed. But let's go down to low resolution, click on that. We'll turn on face recovery AI for that. Again, I'll move face recovery strength to 50. It's a good starting point. Let it render, and it did. There's before, and there's after. And finally, we'll go over to Art and CG. I'll turn face recovery AI on for that. That face recovery strength is at 50. And there's before, and there's after. Now, of the four that I'm viewing, it looks to be either standard model or low resolution model are best. I think the standard model might be best. And typically what I'll do is I'll decide on which model is best when I'm in comparison view. Then I'll go to, I'll make that active, then go to single view so that I see it all by itself. Then I'll come in and the settings which I have on auto, I'll come in and readjust those. Um, let's try removing more blur. I'll move that to the right and didn't really seem to do too much. If I move it all the way down, move it all the way up, not really doing too much. Um, face recovery strength, if I move that to the right, as I mentioned, it seems to blur it a little bit more. If I move it down a little bit, maybe 20%. Not quite as blurred, but it's got some blotchiness in her skin. I think around 50 was pretty good. Again, there's before and there's after. Now I'm going to put the settings back on auto. I think that looks pretty good right the way it was. So there's before and there's after. So I'm going to stay with the standard model at 4x, by the way. I happen to be at 4x. So the original image that I cropped super tight on that model's face was 231 by 205 pixels. And at 4x, it's 924 by 820. So we're going to click Apply. And now it's going to return the image into Lightroom. And what often happens with plugins in Lightroom, you'll get this little like postcard thing over here in the top right hand corner of the image. That means that there's a metadata discrepancy. Uh, Lightroom has metadata it wrote to the file and Topaz Labs has metadata that it wrote to the file and Lightroom doesn't know which metadata to use. Well, you should use the plugins metadata. So to do that, just click on this little postcard and use the middle setting, import settings from disk. So click on that and it may take a second for it to disappear. You may have to click on another image then click off. You may have to wait there, now it disappeared. So let's compare. There's the before and there's the after. Now it is still kind of blurry, but it was a really tight, tight, tight crop. I come in and do some sharpening in Lightroom. A lot of sharpening in Lightroom, maybe even a little noise reduction. All right, so there's before and there's after. There's before and there's after. So I think it did a pretty good job. Um, I'm curious to see how this might work on old scanned images. So you have really old family photos, maybe some really old black and white ones. I'm wondering how it would do on images like that. I'm going to be trying it out on those types of images in the future. So look for that video down the line sometime. But that's it for the latest update of Gigapixel AI. That's version 6.1 with Face Recovery AI. Thank you everyone who watches my videos. I really do appreciate it. I'll talk to you guys soon. <laughs>